SRM School of Film Technology, Ramapuram offers 3 years degree program in film technology. I am proud to be an alumni. Sweetkadai.com, Thirnalveli Halwa Pondra, Namma Uru Famous Thin Pandangalai, Ippove Order Pannunga. Behind words, Mati Yossi Vadagni. இன்றைக்கி எபிசோட் ரொம்ப ஸ்பெஷலான ஒரு எபிசோடாக இருக்க போகுது ஏன் அப்படின்னு கேட்டிங்கன்னா நிறையா ஆக்டர்ஸ் நிறையா ஃபிலிம் பர்சனாலிட்டிஸ் ஆண்டர்பினர்ஸ்லாம் நம்ம இன்டர்வியூ பண்ணியிருக்கோம் அதில் ரொம்ப முக்கியமானவர்னு இவர் வச்சுக்கலாம் நம்ம இன்டர்வியூ பண்ண போகிறவர் ஏன்னா பறக்கிறது அப்படிங்கிறது வந்து மனிதர்களுக்கு எப்போவுமே வயசு வித்தியாசம் பார்க்காம ஒரு ரொம்ப எக்ஸைட்டிங்கான ஒரு விஷயமாகவே இருந்திருக்கு காசு இருக்கிறவங்க மட்டும்தான் ஏரோப்ளைனில் போக முடியும் அப்படிங்கிற ஒரு காலகட்டம் இருந்தது ஒரு ரூபாய்க்கு ஏரோப்ளைன் டிக்கெட் கொடுத்து பல மக்கள் பாமர மக்களை வந்து ஃப்ளைட் ஏற்றி பறக்க வச்சவர் தான் கேப்டன் கோபிநாத் அவர்கள் also sold a lot of tickets at 4000 5000 even when i gave it at 4000 lot of seats were empty give them at 1 rupee two three seats at 500 rupees two three seats at 1000 rupees so in a way the rich subsidizes the poor samibathla release aayi kudiya sura report oda teaser paakumbodhu ungalku therinjirukum gr gopinath avargalude vaalkai varalara thalvi edukapatta oru padam da heard that they have done a lot of dramatization fictionalization i think many biopics are not 100% true to the life of the person He just wanted to meet uh, meet me because he had read the book so he just came to say hello it's a courtesy call and he said captain i admire you i i loved the story and uh, I, w- i want to do it so give me your uh, thumbs up as as a try gopinath avargal vandu meet pandradhukaga inga bangalore vandirukom idu avarudeya edam inga da vandu avarudeya private chartered flights la vandu avaru nipaatirukkaru pinadi irukka helicopter route pada we started here in 1995 96 that was the time we founded the company so we started in a tent here and eventually we built all this facilities but we are in 15 locations gopinath avargala meet panni nariya vishayangal namu pesa porom avarudeya life journey pathiyum avarudeya entrepreneurship pathiyum sura reporter padatha pathiyum nariya vishayangal pesa porom so i hope it will be a very good interaction vaanga polam Hello Captain. Hi, hi, hi. Nice to have you on my show. Yes, happy, happy to be here. So, Surai Potter is based on your book, Simply Fly. So, what was your mindset when the team approached you with the idea? Would you call it your biopic? Yeah, I heard that they have done a lot of dramatization, a lot of fictionalization to make it... Uh, I think many biopics are not 100% true to the life of the person. maybe they have taken liberties i do not know i have not seen it i told i told them to be faithful to the spirit of the book the spirit of the book is about adventure is about a small town rural boy village boy going barefoot to a school going to a kannada medium school where my father was a poor teacher uh, so it's the story of uh, a young boy with dreams it is also the story about uh how uh, life is full of uh, not only adventure it is full of obstacles and uh, it is full of trials and tribulations there will be there will always be problems but if you have courage if you have determination if you have hard work uh, it's not money that matters money will come and money will go uh, but the, it is your uh, spirit of adventure that's what i told them to keep in mind and so i think uh, it's based on my book based on my life story it's insp- inspired by that uh, i think for various reasons they have not uh, kept it true to the exact uh, narrative of the story but though the the actual narrative may be more uh, sometimes you know as they say truth is uh, stranger than fiction maybe my real life was <laughs> probably more more adventurous than in the movie because in the movie they of course there was no that kind of song and dance which probably he shows uh, but largely it is i think uh, this it is a story to inspire people in, from the village saying that don't keep on complaining that because normally you hear from the village you know i don't have anybody i don't have political godfathers i don't have rich people in my family my father was not don't complain you have to create your own future you have to write your own jatak you know you have to script your own horoscope right. you create your horoscope try and uh, overcome the circumstance make circumstances indifferent 
So did uh, Mr. Surya meet you in order to understand you as yeah, a person? Yeah, I think uh, yeah. the first Gunit Manga who came, she's uh, from Bombay. Uh, she told me that she had made a lunchbox. She had made Haram Khor. She had also made uh, Gangsa Wasepur with uh, another director, I think Anurag Kashyap. So she was quite uh, accomplished and uh, she was herself a firebrand. Mm. Though another big producer had, had just approached me that time. Uh, but somehow I felt, you know, like in my own life, you know, a lot of people helped me. So I met her and I felt, you know, I must give her the opportunity because uh, she was young and she was fighting from a background of uh, difficulties. And basically, that's what I told her. I said, you know, you have to make it, uh, don't go too much in departure from the book. Yeah. Uh, you know, in terms of, you know, it should be, it should truly inspire people. It should look realistic. Even though you may have dramatized it, it should look realistic that it is possible in this world right. to do things, to achieve things. And so I gave her the film rights. And then uh, she, in turn, uh, uh, I want, told her to do Hindi first. But she says a Tamil director, Sudha uh, Kongara, had approached her. So she wants to first do the Tamil, like in Bombay, Maniratnam's uh, movie. Yeah. Because the Sudha was uh, working in uh, Maniratnam's uh, studios she, as an assistant director to Maniratnam. So I said, fine. And so it's coming in Tamil now. So I met Sudha. She interviewed me, m met my family, met my other colleagues. There's Captain Samuel, who's my other co-founder, Captain Jayant, who's another co-founder. Uh, there were other team members who made it happen, it's not just me. There were a lot right. of other team members, especially Captain Samuel, uh, Captain Jayant Povaya, uh, John Kurvila, uh, my family. She met all of them uh, over a period of two, three days. She camped here. Then I met uh, Gunit a uh, few times. She said she will do Hindi next year. Mm -hmm. She's almost, I think, finalized it. So now it will be in this. Uh, right. So is that a question that uh, Mr. Surya asked that you found a little intriguing? No, he just wanted to meet uh, meet me because he had read the book and uh, so he just came to say hello, it's a courtesy call and we just chatted for half an hour and he said, Captain, I admire you, I allowed the story and uh, I, w I want to do it. So give me your uh, thumbs up. I said, fine. <laughs> so there is also a romantic angle given to the film. So is that also a fictional element that was added? Or I think yeah, I think part of it is fictional, part of it is uh, true. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm, I have to see the film myself. Yeah, okay. yeah there are some uh, some adventures there, uh, you know, uh, some romance there. <laughs> so I don't know what, uh, how much, how, how they have sort of woven the story. I have to see it myself because of all this COVID, I yes. couldn't uh, see it. Otherwise, they were supposed to screen it for me. Right. Before the uh, premiere, actual, release, yeah. actual premiere in the theatre, we were supposed to have a premiere, but I think the events have changed now. I think October 30th they are going to do the release. Yes. Yeah. Captain Gopinath, our guy, I am going to You have to write your own jatak. You know, you have to script your own horoscope. Our day, our canoe, very airline company, we can open it. I have to park in the park. I have to park in the park. So, I have to park in the park. I have to park in the park. I have to park in the park. I have to park in Talking about adventure, Captain, were you an angry young man when you were young? Because uh, throughout the teaser of the film, Surya looks so angry. <laughs> Yeah, I think, you know, in uh, one interview uh, for some TV, somebody asked uh, my people and uh, he said, how is he? They said, he's, he's, he's nice, but, you know, he's, he's, he's always impatient. He's always angry. In, in the sense that, you know, I was, I was uh, so obsessed, you know, which is not the right, maybe it may not be the right thing always. I was so obsessed with my dream. I was so obsessed to the point of madness. I was very impatient and angry if uh, people did not buy into that dream. So I would joke, you know, with my pilots, you know, before the phone rings, you must answer it. You know, there may be a medical evacuation. Somebody want, may want a helicopter uh, for, a, for an accident. Pick up the phone before it rings. It's not possible, but pick it up before it rings. You can't take your own time. So, uh, so my secretary who passed away, Cecilia, God bless her, uh, she told, you know, he's, he's always impatient. <laughs> <laughs> 
that's because of a constant uh, <laughs> always angry yeah <laughs> angry ne i would say in a good sense it yeah. may not be good for my blood pressure but it was in a good sense that you know i was uh, i didn't want people to be led by led back yeah. and taking it easy you know you can't tolerate indiscipline is it <laughs> yeah not uh, i i used to, i used to say that in the in the airline you are check the checks you right they fly faster than your airplanes there was so much of uh, pressure mm-hmm. you know but by also by nature you know, <laughs> i'm not saying it's the right thing to do there are good things and bad things so people that's why in my book they can take the good things that right. they find so those who are going to watch the film surai poto might wonder if uh, captain gopinath would come back with a low cost air carrier uh, so will yeah, he be back yeah many times you know th- for things to happen you need uh, of course a big dream uh, you have to dream big then you have to have uh, combine that with uh, adventure combine it with hard work courage and uh, and also you know a lot of luck uh, a lot of uh, grace uh, things had to fall in place and it all clicked last time and uh, uh, fortune favors the brave you get luckier if you work harder you get luckier if you are more courageous and uh, maybe now again uh, because uh, the country is in a under crisis and every time there is a crisis every time there is trouble uh, there is always an opportunity and i think now the opportunity is again there because most of the airlines are in huge debt then then the bigger the airline bigger the problem so to start uh, uh, now uh, is a big opportunity is also a big risk so who, who knows maybe i yeah we can start again if there's a chance you you're going to grab it just yeah. like that yeah, <laughs> yeah. i mean this what you know you know opportunities you see the world has never been secure you know people say today is bad covid is the india china war the world recession global ter- the world has always been insecure right you know it was always insecurity but opportunities were always always there you know you know opportunities are uh, security is very rare the, if you look at last 1000 uh, years the number of years the world was peaceful and secure that number of years is very less is largely a turmoil so while that is true while there is no insecurity there are always opportunities while there is no security there are always opportunities rightly said yes uruk poi maadu mekkira vela appa where the fuck should i go let's talk about this giant figure at the background so how many of these machines do you have here we have about 3 4 here uh, this uh, helicopters but we also have uh, business jets uh, which we are operating and maintaining for third parties okay we started here in 1995 uh, uh, 96 uh, you know that at the time we founded the company mm-hmm. so we started with one helicopter we started in a tent here and eventually we built all this uh, facilities but we are in 15 locations this is the original company we started with helicopters and uh, small planes and uh, business jets that was in 97 then in 2003 i started the airline the air decken uh, which which i then eventually sold to vijamalya the low cost airline yes uh, which was which became famous uh, uh, for one rupee ticket and which had the logo of um, the common man uh, a cartoon of uh, akil lakshman captain air decken broke not just the cost barrier but also the caste barrier yes sir so is there a specific incident or when did you see that actually happening in fact my launch advertisement was we have no caste barrier mm. we have only one class you know all 180 seats because in those days you had business class and premium and then economy or pre- business class and economy and we said uh, we are no caste barrier we are only one class everybody you know carpenter mason plumber farmer anybody who so pays the lowest ticket they get and you know you can be sitting next to a uh, villager you can be sitting next to a plumber a carpenter so uh, we, we said that class barrier is not there and the caste barrier is not there so there's no class barrier there's no caste barrier and we also broke the cost barrier yes because so there was a there was an ad we had that worked because uh, we just said that you buy a ticket there are no seats like in a train third class buy the ticket first come first served you go and sit where you want so people loved it you know so there's no question of standing behind a rich man or a no any, anybody can go and take a so they would throw the towel <laughs> throw a handkerchief 
just like in a bus. seat. <laughs> you made that that simple, is it? And it also brought down my cost. Yeah. You know, because the moment you try to control many of those things, then there is cost. Though, of course, uh, it was a little chaotic, mm -hmm. but uh, it was fun. Yeah. You know, in the sense that, you know, you open the thing and tell people, you, you go and sit where you want, the 180 seats, 180 passengers, you sit where you want, and the moment you sit, we'll go. There was one chaos on one side, but it was also, uh, you know, we didn't have to keep on announcing, you know, if a plane is leaving, please come, please come. So they would be there at the gate, ready to go and jump and occupy. And so the moment they occupied, and we also told them that there was no food going to be served there, only snacks. Uh -huh. And uh, the air hostess will come with the bag, so please put it, there will be no cleaning. Because the moment they get down, the next flight will come. So Because otherwise in the regular airline, you have to clean the aircraft, it will take one hour. Right. You know, somebody has to come and clean all that. So we tell them, last before landing, the air hostess would come with the bag and say, please put all your garbage. So that's how we run it. And uh, so that is efficient and uh, low cost, both. And I would see many of these seats going, even if I give it away at 2000, you know, many seats were going, even though the regular fare was 12,000 in jet airways mm -hmm. and 12,100 in Air India. There were only three airlines eh, in Sahara. I was giving my tickets at 4,000, 5,000. Yes. But even when I gave it at 4,000, a lot of seats were empty. That's when I said, give some at 1,000, give some at uh, 500. Then I said, okay, anyway, some seats are going empty. Give them at uh, one rupee. Some, not, not all seats. You know, every flight, you know, give two, three flights at one rupee. Two, three seats at 500 rupees. Two, three seats at 1,000 rupees. So in a way, the rich subsidize the poor because I also sold a lot of tickets at 4,000, 5,000. And on the last uh, two days, last, about 25% tickets, I sold it from 5,000 to 10,000. So the average was, we had to get an average in those days of about 3,700. Every seat must have 3,700 okay. per seat into 180. So that comes to some uh, uh, 6 lakhs or something like that. As long as they get, got 6 lakhs. How I got the 6 lakhs? Some people paid 1 rupee, some people paid 500, some people paid 1,000, and some paid 4, and some people paid 10,000. Still, some people maybe may have paid about 11. Still, it was cheaper than jet airways. That's how our flights were going full. Captain, with such low airfares, NV finds its way. So, how did you manage to handle it? Yeah, I mean, um, it, was, uh, it was not easy. Uh, there were a lot of other challenges we had. Because we were expanding, we were losing money. Because uh, if I did not expand, you know what Jet would do? They would put one flight in my next to my flight, before my flight, at a lower fare. And then he had uh, four, uh, three, uh, 400 flights, and in the other 400 flights, he would have a higher fare so that he could kill me. Therefore, I had to expand. So when he started lowering his fare, he was also bleeding. So if I had a lot of flights, then he'll, he'll bleed more. Uh, I'll not bleed that much. So, so I was still losing money because I was expanding. You know, I put one aircraft a month, every month for 48 months. So it was a huge expansion. And unfortunately for us at that time, the oil price, which was at 20 rupees a liter, it went to about $145 a barrel. So that created a huge, uh, you know, stress on the airline because 50% of the aircraft is uh, cost is uh, fuel on a, on a ticket. It was tough, it's not easy, but you know, we were the largest airline in three years. Yeah. And uh, largest in the number of cities. We also went to a lot of cities where nobody was going. We eliminated all the middlemen. You see, before Je uh, Deccan came, it, you could only buy a ticket in Jedeves through a travel agent. Right. You couldn't buy it directly. So we changed that. We said you can buy as an individual directly on the internet. Right. The travel agent also can buy uh, uh, on behalf of the customer, but you know, he will charge 5% more. If the ticket is uh, 2000, he will charge 2100. So the company uh, which was handling the IT infrastructure for Air Deccan secretly started building its own airlines. Yes, that's right. That so, is there in my memory. Yeah. Now, these were all, I think... Uh, Must have been say, hard to digest. How yeah, did you... You know, it, it was, uh, you could say it was... Uh, well, somebody would say it's a sabotage, you know, breach of trust. And somebody will say it's all, all is fair in love and war, you know, all is fair in business. You know, you can do anything. It's also stupidity on my part that the person whom I trusted had not put a proper legal uh, contract, that he cannot start an airline if he is not handling my this one. So that dispute caused a lot of problems, but then it's part of the business. Yeah. So that's how you just continue we with your We continued and we changed it.
captain do you remember your first flying experience yeah the first experience was uh, when i was in the army i went in a military helicopter once and a military plane another time and of course there were uh, that was in the himalayas uh, i went as a passenger i was posted in sikkim on the chinese border then i was posted in uh, kashmir that is uh, you know it is difficult to explain it is a thrilling experience for, for any anybody any child to sit in a plane is a is a great experience regardless of how old you are and the much later uh, there is a army friend of mine a, a, a colleague of mine who was also part of the air deck story on uh, captain vishnu rawal had uh, come here in a g- helicopter to hl and uh, he and i flew in that uh, helicopter which he had brought it for maintenance we flew it uh, from bangalore to my farm uh, where i was then living after the army so we landed in my farm we just chose the uh, fields there, the the field the crop fields of ragi and jowar uh, we were growing so it had been harvested so as open field so we landed there had some tender coconut and lunch and then he brought me and he flew off and that's when this idea came to my mind that you know it's the helicopter in fact there is one ad there if you can see that was my first ad if it if it's in the map we'll take you there if it's on the map we'll take you there wow <laughs> if it's on the map we sure it is on the map we'll take you there the helicopter can take you anywhere so we took that helicopter and put it on a, a fishing camp in the kaveri river yeah and then from the top we took a picture the so the idea came that you know uh, we should we start a helicopter company for the public uh, you know in those days only the only about five six people had helicopters in india the very rich like the birlas uh, even ambanis did not have a helicopter then usually using it for themselves as more a prestige or they were using it uh, as political patronage mm-hmm. they were not using it for uh, customers so i said they have no competition because nobody is got a service for customers and there's a dialogue in the teaser which says uh, even ratan tata wasn't able to establish an airline business here ratan tata wale inge or airline aarambikka mudiyala so do you still think uh, al- establishing an airline business or the total airline business is a tedious one in our country is it is it's not easy because uh, somehow airline is still you know controlled a lot so of course uh, you know uh, a lot of reforms have been made a lot of this one but still there is already a guidelines so everybody should be able to fill up that and get it but still it, in the end you know it goes to a minister see when they when you already set that these are the 10 conditions to fulfill for an airline then if you fulfill those conditions the uh, the officer should be able to issue the license but even if you fulfill all that it then again goes to the minister for his final approval which you know uh, causes undesirable uh, results in undesirable because the minister may like you may not like you he may be corrupt he may not Personally, be corrupt yeah so, so there is a personal element uh, introduced there and then you know there are a lot of other uh, rules and regulations some are required and some are excessive coming back from british times uh, like many of our laws are from the british times our sedition law is from british times the indian official uh, secrets act is from the british time so many many of the laws in the aviation are also pre independence so a lot of reforms are still needed but still the fact that i could start an airline shows that anybody can start an airline uh, provided you have the grit and determination of course if you take money and uh, you want a, uh, a faster uh, clearance somebody will take the money and give you the clearance but it's also possible that's what i said is possible to do it without paying somebody I did not pay anybody oh. but it took me more time I did not pay 1 rupee to get my license okay. to get my clearances so I we did it because we had a another good friend of mine who was with me who was ready to work with me and together we 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 did it yeah. do you still enjoy flying an aircraft yeah I mean you you know it's a, it's a great thrill absolutely it is uh, nothing like that yeah in the mari or jet da vaanathula parakumbodhu நாம சின்ன பசங்களாக இருக்கும்போது ஆகாயத்தை பார்த்து ஒரு ஃபேசினேஷன் நம்மளுக்கு வந்திருக்கும் அப்படி ஒரு ட்ரீம் தான் கேப்டன் கோபிநாத் அவர்களுக்கும் சின்ன வயசில் அவர் கண்ட கனவு இன்றைக்கி இந்த மாதிரி ஒரு மூணு நாலு ஏர்க்ராஃப்ட் பெங்களூரில் ஏர்போர்ட் பக்கத்தில் இந்த மாதிரி ஒரு இடத்துல வந்து பார்க் பண்ணி வச்சுருக்காரு ஸோ தட் இஸ் தி பவர் ஆஃப் ட்ரீம் அவர் சாதித்தது பல 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 விஷயங்கள் நம்ம அதை எல்லாத்தையுமே வந்து இந்த இன்டர்வியூவில் பேசியிருக்கோம்
So what made you join the army, Captain? Well, I was in my village uh, going to the uh, Kannada medium school and one day the headmaster came there to the school and said that there is an examination for a military school called the Sainik school. In those days, each state had one Sainik school which was just set up. So this school was the first batch. It was still not set up, but for the first batch, they were calling for examination. Mm -hmm. I was in my seventh standard. I was about, I think, 12. I just put up my hand it, uh, saying that I want to write the exam. And I do not know why. Nobody in the village, in the school, nobody else put up the hand to write the exam. And, you know, my grandfather had written a poem. Which, uh, which I read much later, It says, Gudi aache, gidada aache, gadi aache, hogona bandiro hosanadike. That means, Gudi aache, beyond the temples, mm -hmm. gidada aache, beyond the forests, Gudi aache, beyond the temples, beyond the forests, gadi aache, beyond the borders. Let's go and discover new lands. Wow. So, I did not know anything about military, you know, I, I had only seen these boards, even now in Karnataka, you can see it in villages, military hotel. Mm -hmm. So, I asked my father once, you know, what is that military hotel? He would say that, you know, there are people who eat non-vegetarian, because in military they eat non-vegetarian, it makes them strong. And I was a little skinny boy. So, I somehow want, because I had to be bullied in school, somehow I felt, you know, if I go to the military, then I can teach all these boys a lesson, you know, <laughs> bullying me in the school. So, in that sense, you know, I also was dreaming to go out of the village to see new things and I just said and I went and uh, took the exam I went by bus and stayed in my uncle's house and took the exam and I failed I failed because the exam was in English mm -hmm. then I told my headmaster in, cry, in tears I said look you know uh, I did not answer because everything was in uh, English so he got very upset and uh, went away so he wrote a letter in a postcard in anger to the headquarters in Delhi saying that how can you give uh, exam to children in rural areas in English. You should mm. give it to them in their mother tongue. And somebody saw that card, postcard in Delhi, written from a village headmaster. And uh, they said, we will give one more exam in uh, uh, Canada. So again, he came and said, look, Canada exam, who will go? And I, again, I was the only kid in my school. <laughs> I said, yes. So I went, this time I passed. Then I joined the Sainik school. Oh. And uh, that's how I joined. Then the went to the NDA National Defense Academy and the Indian Military Academy. Then, as a, in the academy, my the war broke out. So the Bangladesh War. So I went to the Bangladesh War. Okay. Then after the war, I was in Sikkim. I was in Bhutan. I was in Kashmir, in Rajasthan. And after about eight, eight years of service, and eight years of training, one day I said, "Look, I must come do something on my own." Mm -hmm. So I came back to my village and uh, took to farming. Farming. Yes. So. Entrepreneur, farmer, yeah. captain, <laughs> author, which is the most fulfilling role? I think the uh, most fulfilling is farming. The most is the most difficult uh, vocation to succeed, but it is also the most uh, noble, most satisfying. Uh, like someone said, uh, the first man was the first farmer. Mm -hmm. The first farmer was the first man. The man who, who came into this world first he was a farmer. So I, I was, it's nice, it was, uh, so I went and took to farming. During the farming, like all farmers, I got into debt. Uh, so I used also started doing a lot of other things to support my family. Because mm -hmm. I got married when I was there. In fact, my wife came to see me in a bullock cart. Wow. Because there was no uh, uh, road between the bus stand and my farm, which is about four kilometers. So my neighbor, Manje Gowda, God bless him, he's no more. He gave his bullock cart to, to bring my wife from the bus stand to my so she came with her father and mother I was living in a tent I told her you must come and see because there was nothing there it was not a fancy farm it was uh, all brushed land barren land which I was trying to create into a farm it was a miracle that the bullock cart reached because uh, as it was approaching in that you could hear the bells and all it was coming down the slope and the, my farmer friend saw that uh, his son had gone to bring her from the bus stand Okay. And I was in a motorcycle, I had come a little ahead. That he, they had forgotten to put the pin. Oh my God. By mistake. And so somehow it came those four kilometers. Otherwise the wheel would have gone. My God. <laughs> they would have got injured. So I think that's why they say marriages are made in heaven. Yeah. So it, somehow it came through and uh, we got married. We had, had uh, two daughters there. So that's the reason I uh, had a lot of other businesses. Uh, I had a motorcycle business, for a dealership for Enfield motorcycles. Restaurant? Uh, I had a Udupi restaurant. Yeah. 
had an agriculture consultancy company. I, I died many a deaths, but I, each time I came up. Yeah. Uh, each time I drowned, but I came up. And um, I mean, that is my story, actually, that you rise and fall. So it's not the rising or the falling, it is uh, how you rise each time you fall. I mean, that is the thing. So everybody falls. Absolutely. But how do you rise after you fall? Yes. Is the key. Victor Hugo said, the glory of man is not in falling, but in rising each time you fall. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's what how it was. And uh, then I came to Bangalore and uh, started the helicopter company, and then the airline. Yeah, your your wife has been a big support, isn't it? I was uh, all the time dreaming, and I was also not, not dreaming and planning a lot. I used to dream and, and jump mm -hmm. into the venture. Uh, that got me into a lot of trouble. It also got me out of trouble. You know, I'm saying when I say got me out of trouble because if I knew all the obstacles. Right. then I wouldn't have started on that venture. True. So coming from such a background, Captain, uh, having a dream of starting an airlines, it requires a huge capital. So how did you raise the money? Because people yeah. have to start believing. Yeah. If you look at the story of all the entrepreneurs, see, it was not the money that took them to success. It was the energy, it was the passion, it was the ideas, it was the commitment, it was the dream. If that is there, that is that energy and passion is more important than capital. It is true then, it's true today, it's true tomorrow. If you have that, then like the river to the sea, somebody will find you and give you the money. You need to believe in yourself, and uh, and you have to show that you can't simulate it, like in a simulator of a aircraft. You can't simulate. You have to believe in it. You can't play act it. And if you are totally co committed to that, and whatever you have, you put it. So I had a small uh, apartment at that time and I pledged it. That was all I had. That, that small apartment would not even buy the blade of one helicopter. In a helicopter, you know, there are what blades say. Even oh. a blade you can't buy. But I put what I had. My colleague, uh, Captain Samuel, put what he had. But then, you know, because we had the idea, we had everything else. Then somebody came and said, okay, we'll give some money and give us some shares. And that's what I did in the Deccan Charters. Uh, the helicopter company and same thing with the airline which is there more in the my book right so you need to uh, uh, have the ability to take the risk if you don't take the risk that means you are now saying i will look i don't believe it i will not put my 10000 rupees but you put the money and i'll i will not take salary but you put the money then you know the guy will say look if you are not ready to lose your only 10000 rupees all that you have in your life is 1 lakh all that you have is one small house. If you are not ready to risk that, then uh, how do you expect me to put 100 crores? You know, is a question that will come into my mind. So you have to be ready to put everything on the, you know, for the venture. Taking off on a venture may not be a airline venture. Any venture is taking off on a wing and a prayer. That means you are off now and nobody else is there except you trying to, you know, float and your prayer. Right. So you have to demonstrate that courage to believe in yourself. So being a successful entrepreneur, who are your most favorite entrepreneurs at present? Oh, many of them. I mean, yeah. you know, you have to, you know, you have to ask who, who may I not learned from, you know. Oh, okay. Well, many, you know, you, of course, you are the greatest star. You know, Walt Disney is there. Sam Walton is there. Walt Disney said, if you can dream it, you can do it. You know, if you are dreaming it, then you can do it. It looks unreal, but it's true. See, entrepreneurship is not just building something. Mm -hmm. It is the ability to see what others cannot see. Right. It is the ability to create something which was not there before. You know, to, to create a new market which, which did not exist. That is entrepreneurship. Like credit card. The guy who invented credit card is a is a is a genius. Bill Gates is a genius, or Steve Jobs is a, because they created a new market. Or Google, they created something which did not exist before. Of course, anybody who is an entrepreneur, you go and set up, set up an UDP hotel, you are a great entrepreneur. But somebody who changes the industry, changes the way people do business, changes the lives of people, he is a grand entrepreneur and we have many of them in the West, not so many in India, mm -hmm. but very great entrepreneurs are here. Because India somehow historically went through all this. Uh, bureaucracy before that uh, uh, British rule and uh, we missed the industrial revolution but I think it's going to happen. Right. Which is the one thing that turns you off when you hire an employee? 
Yeah, I mean attitude. Attitude. Yeah, attitude and also the ability to be uh, curious. Mm-hmm. People are going to watch the film. They're going to get inspired by your story. They're going going to get a glimpse of your life. So, what would be your message to them? People will be watching it now. Yeah, I think um, you know you you should not lose yourself in despair. Don't lose yourself in uh, cynicism. You have to lose yourself in action. You know, continued enthusiasm, like Montaigne said, continued enthusiasm is the uh, wisdom of life. Great. Thank you so much, Captain. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much. Great. Take care. Yeah. இந்த வீடியோ உங்களுக்கு பிடிச்சிருந்தா லைக் பண்ணுங்க இதே மாதிரி நிறைய வீடியோஸ் பண்ண தான் போகிறோம் உங்கள் ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் அண்ட் ஃபேமிலிக்கு மறக்காமல் ஷேர் பண்ணுங்கள் என்ன தோணுதோ கமெண்ட் பண்ணுங்கள் ஐம்பத்தி ரெண்டு லட்சம் பேர் எங்கள் ஃபேமிலிக்கு சப்ஸ்கிரைப் பண்ணியிருக்காங்க ஸோ நீங்களும் மறக்காமல் சப்ஸ்கிரைப் பண்ணுங்கள் இப்போ பார்க்க போகிறது கன்னியாகுமரி மீன் குழம்பு ஏன் மெட்ராஸ்லாம் வச்சா போலீஸ் பிடிச்சிருமா செமை SRM School of Film Technology Ramapuram offers 3 years degree program in film technology. I am proud to be an alumni. sweetkadai.com Tirunelveli halwa pondra namma oru famous thin pandangalai ippove order pannunga.